The officer in today's video is auditioning for the remake of The Matrix as Neo. Hi friends, welcome to today's crazy badge cam lesson. I am your host here at Active Self Protection, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Willover. Today's video comes to us from beautiful Carlsbad, California. Magtech is the only pistol or rifle ammo I use on the range and I recommend them highly. I've seen their manufacturing and quality control firsthand and it's incredible, which is why it always performs reliably and accurately. They are operating at max capacity and cranking out rounds for you to keep your skills sharp. Pick up some MagTech at your local ammo retailer or get it shipped fast at luckygunner.com. Watch the dash cam here. You see this officer see this uh, Econo line make several traffic violations, run a stop sign and all this other stuff. And so he's going to initiate a traffic stop. Well, he doesn't know that the guy inside there has uh, recently had a DUI and just wants to fight. But we're going to see it in a second on the bad on the dash cam. Let's listen in. Forty with both shots fired. Shots fired. Our homie drives the car off just like a hundred yards. He drives that Econo line and then decides, you know, that was actually a mistake. I should not have shot at the officer. And so I, maybe I shouldn't run anymore. Well, his milkshake is going to bring all of the badge boys to the yard and they are going to get him into custody. We have that on badge cam as well. Let's listen in. Okay, come on out. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go to my window. Just, just yeah, right that's here. fine. Just right here. Okay. That's it? That's it. Yep. Okay, wait, wait, stand up, stand up. I need you to lift up your jacket. Put your hand to the, to the collar of your jacket, like your collar, that's your waist. There you go, lift your jacket up, as high as you can. Okay, spin around 360. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, face away from me. Back up to the sound of my voice. Back up, back up, back up. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Okay, I understand. Keep coming back. Come down your knees. Down your knees. Hands behind your back. Is there anybody else in the vehicle? Okay, is there a weapon in the vehicle? Okay, where is the weapon? Bottom of the the shuttle. Okay, what is it? A pistol? Okay. A Glock 19? Any weapons on you? Stand up, please. I'm gonna help you. What's in your pocket? Uh, not sure. Here, back up towards uh, me, please. We're gonna come over here. Good bit of money. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it in my car. <sighs> what happened? What the heck? Scared tactic. That's the only reason why I did anything. I was just yeah. scared. I got a DUI. Like maybe. Okay. Uh, his intimidation ploy ends up getting him some charges for attempted murder, aggravated assault on a police officer. Uh, the DUI is the least of his concerns. Now, thankfully, the officer was not hit by that gunfire. None of the shots that the officer fired hit that homie either, though. But thankfully, our cop wasn't hurt. You know, I'm going to agree with you on that. Carlsbad, California, beautiful town. It's lovely. Just south of Oceanside, which is, I have people there that I love, but it's not quite as, quite as beautiful as Carlsbad. Yeah, I mean, Carlsbad's a beautiful town, but guess what? Uh, meth heads like it there, too. I think a good mental rep here in the beginning that this is just a, a regular traffic stop, right? That, okay, we see a dude doing some things he shouldn't do, let's light that up. But every single time you pull somebody over, treat it as an opportunity to remind yourself of your zones of safety and to do things according to the right way because they're gonna escalate in a hurry and you don't wanna uh, you know, be left behind. Now I will say this, man, at the beginning here when the bullets fly, I just really wanna commend this officer 
that he didn't hesitate, that he heard a gunshot, he saw what was going on, and he starts getting his gun out while he's moving. And rather than stand there and think, oh no, what am I gonna do? Or get his gun out and just have a stand and deliver gunfight with this guy, he starts moving his feet, and I think that might have saved his life. In our old age, in my old agency, I should say, you didn't work with me, unfortunately. That would have been a lot of fun, by the way. Um, in my old agency, uh, we would, we would, uh, I was a firearms instructor for a period of time. We would encourage every agent on the line and every task force officer on the line as they're drawing, as you, as the command comes to fire or the target turns or whatever, uh, as you, as you begin your draw stroke, move your feet, have you move right or left, just one step is all you can do on the line, right? Practically, but just to ingrain the idea that we don't stand there and lock our feet like Lego people into the ground and not move. Uh, I think moving here probably very likely saved his life, not standing there, you know, in the zone of fire. And you know, we talked about it, John, this cop doesn't know he's about to be in a gunfight. His invitation to the gunfight was a round of ammunition directed directly at him. Uh, his ability to recognize that, as Stephanie Widener likes to say, radically and rapidly accept reality. This is happening. I need to get the heck out of Dodge. I mean, he it was pretty much instantaneous. So this this officer is is switched on and he's thought about this already. He does a great job of getting to his zone of safety, right? So he was kind of behind the B, the B pillar on the car. We're gonna see that on his badge cam in a second. But he also moved and really hauled to the back of the vehicle and back behind his patrol car. So you're back behind the blinding lights of the patrol car. And so he got to his zone of safety. That's great training and following great training. So I, I really think kudos to him for that, uh, for, for having that. Now, okay, let's watch the badge cam think about this here. And, and you said it already, Mike, but I think it's an incredibly important lesson that as a police officer, you're gonna be behind the curve. When does a gunfight start for a police officer? It starts when the bad guy produces a weapon and, and starts shooting it at you or, or starts stabbing you with it or whatever. That means you are at the initiative deficit because cops are here, he's investigating a crime. He's not thinking, hey, this guy's gonna pull a gun on me when he does. And, and it, so as an officer, you're always behind on initiative. You are always second. So you gotta say, okay, wait a minute, I'm gonna get back ahead and earn my initiative back. Just recognize you're gonna be behind the curve when the deadly force encounter starts. If I was uh, in the mindset to pull someone over and I've made more than two turns behind them on the street, I always in my mind assumed they knew they're about to get pulled. You, everyone's been there, right? Where you're driving on a city street and you make a right and the cop behind you makes a right and you make a left and then he makes a left or she makes a left and you're thinking, ah, I'm about to get pulled over. Uh, just assume that your bad guy or gal is thinking exactly the same thing and they're and part of the reason they don't stop right away frequently is to formulate a plan. This guy's plan, such as it is, was to try to as we hear later, scare the cop, intimidate him into letting him go, which is not a best plan, by the way. Don't do this. Um, but you know that that was that was his introduction to the gunfight. Was uh, I'm being shot at, and I think you pointed out here, John. I can't see it on my monitor, but it looks like the round. I think you said it went right through the the door through the B pillar of the door. Is that right? Yeah, right through the B pillar it went. So scary stuff, and hundred percent. And and as soon as it does, thankfully he gets away. And now he starts filling in the back windows of this car. And uh, again, I know some folks are gonna be like, well, heck, why did he stop there? Well, he's behind the bright lights of his patrol cruiser, so he has the advantage of the blinding light. And does he need to get fire at this guy? Unequivocally, absolutely. So he got to a safe place and then got fire directed back towards the guy so he can't keep shooting at him. Now, so it's a big world and there are small bullets and thankfully nobody else was harmed, but you know, you wanna do your very best to put uh, shots on the guy, not just around him. Tough to say where the shots went exactly, John, but it looks from this angle, this is where he's shooting from based on the way the glass was breaking. It looks like he's aiming. He's he's aiming towards the, the area where the driver would normally be. So he's not just sort of firing recklessly. We don't want to give the impression that we're, that we're saying that at all. And a note to non-cops watching this video, if you're ever annoyed at night when you get pulled over and they have every light on the car on and it's blinding and you can't see and you have to move your rear view mirror and all that sort of thing, this is why, this is exactly why that goes on. And so as, as John said, you can get behind that sort of wall of light. Now the light's not gonna protect you from incoming rounds, but it does make it very hard for the bad guy to see you and shoot back with any kind of accuracy. So that's why the police use all the lights. Yeah, and they do. And listen, that, that barrier of Candela, that photonic barrier is real. I also think this officer, as opposed to a, a badge cam that we had not too long ago with an officer prairie dogging around his car, this officer shoots and then scoots, gets to a different spot in order to assess what is going on. 
That evidence is to me very good training. I, I would say, watching this one, Mike, that this officer had a good approach. He was really switched on and, and started fighting quickly, got some rounds on, on target, and then moved to assess in a different location. That's some A plus level gunfighting. 100%. I think, um, you know, we could, we could call Commander Vi out of the Houston PD, the commander of the Special Pants Brigade, and ask him. Uh, but I think this guy, too, has probably, I'm guessing, uh, maybe been in combat or at least in the military and done some, done some other training other than just what the PD gives you. Because his recognition of the initial shot, the quickness with which he got the heck out of Dodge and got out of that sort of kill zone, and then, as you said, John, then fires some shots from one side of the car and goes, okay, well, this, this position is now stale. I need to get out of this position and somewhere else. Now, the guy's driving off, but at the time that he made his movement, he didn't know that. So he was going to the side of the car to get a better vantage point or maybe to start giving commands or whatever. But yeah, not popping up in the same spot more than once is critical. And this cop obviously knew that. Really, really good job for that. Now, of course, the guy only goes 100 yards down the road, kind of realizes and regrets his life choices, which, I mean, he's going to spend the next 40 years in the Heine Polk Hotel thinking about it. Okay, great. You know, he's going to live in a California-supplied gated community, as it were. Uh, and, and then I, I think that the last bit that I want to talk about here is the fact that this went from a traffic infraction to a gunfight. I mean, just boom, like that. And then it went back to, I got to get this guy into custody. And, and so it went escalated back down in a hurry and kudos to these officers for being able to de-escalate themselves to not you know beat tar out of this guy to not fill him in even more or those things and i think that took a, a really significant amount of emotional fitness and self-control and they had it we talk about gas and brakes in law enforcement what do we mean by that it means sometimes you got to hit the gas and charge in and do a thing. Sometimes you need to hit the brakes. Sometimes you need to feather the accelerator and the brakes. And this is a good example of that where we went from, uh, I have to stop this guy with a firearm to, okay, well, now he's complying. I need, I need to back down and give good, clear verbal commands and do all the scene security stuff I would normally do. I want to note, it looked like at least for a minute there, they had a squad car way down the road. I could be wrong. Um, to block traffic uh, for this so so that nobody wanders into this sort of zone where they might get shot. And I did notice another officer there with an AR with a can on the end, which I love to see. I didn't know they were doing that now. I've been in California for a few years. Uh, just a textbook job. And I love, we, we joked about this offline, John, but I just love the officer's language here. The goodness, gracious, great googly moogly. This guy just shot at me. Um, this guy's a stud. He's an absolute stud. He, he started this traffic stop. Clearly with the right mindset of, I'm going to be polite, courteous, and professional, but I'm going to have a plan to get out of the danger zone. I'm going to have a plan to return fire if fired upon. He he w he started this shift in a good space. Uh, odds are he has good uh, mental and spiritual fitness because he just he just went in there and did what he had to do and did an exemplary job. Uh, I used to work sometimes with this police department in Carlsbad, California, a bunch of absolute true professionals. Um, if you live in Carlsbad uh, and you see a cop, hey, buy, buy him a drink, buy him a coffee, tell him thanks because they are out there covering your ass.